in Isaiah 43, verse number 1, the Bible says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. And since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Uh, let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, uh, and show us former things? Uh, let them bring forth their witnesses, uh, that they may be justified, uh, or let them hear and say, It is truth. Uh, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, uh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Uh, before me there was no God formed, uh, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, uh, and beside me there is no Savior. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your goodness and your excellent kindness and mercy towards us. Father, we are not worthy of your blessings, but we are grateful for them. Now, Father, as we assemble today, many of our, our people are not here. They're sick. And God, we know that you're the great physician. We know that nothing is impossible with thee. And God, I pray you'd reach down your hand and touch those that are sick, uh, lift them up, help them to feel better and touch their bodies. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are traveling, you'd give them traveling mercies. Uh, God, I pray for our elderly, you'd watch over them and undergird them and help them. Uh, and Father, well, we are thankful for these that have assembled here today. And God, you knew before we was that this day would befall us. Uh, and God, you know what we stand in need of today. And Father, I pray you'd meet every need of every heart. Uh, I pray you'd do an eternal work in our midst. Uh, I pray that Jesus would be highly exalted. Uh, now help us, Lord, to set in heavenly places. Uh, help us, Lord, to appreciate the goodness and grace of God. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help your people, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus uh, we ask these things. Uh, and amen, and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things out of these verses. Uh, there's a lot of preaching in these verses. Uh, I kept you way too late Wednesday night. I'll try and get you out of here early this morning. All right? Uh, thank you, Phil. He's the only one that don't believe me. All right? I want you to notice that the Scriptures reveal a personal relationship. Look in verse number 1 again. The Bible says, But now... Thus saith the Lord that created thee. Uh, by the way, if you hadn't figured it out, God's the one that made you. He formed thee in the belly. Uh, uh, God's the one that gives life. Uh, and God's the one that gives eternal life. Uh, but notice he said, uh, 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 I, uh, But thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, uh, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Uh, do you know 170 times in your Bible God says, Fear not. Uh, 
I'm glad we serve a God uh, 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 that honors faith. Uh, I'm glad we've got a God that we can count on. Uh, I'm glad, my dear friends, when you put God first, you don't have to fear. Fear man bringeth a snare. Uh, I know the world gets big. Uh, I know problems get big. Uh, I know waves get big. Uh, I know storm clouds get dark. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, if you'll stand on the truths of God's Word, uh, you'll find in your darkest days uh, there is a light. Uh, you'll find in your hopeless days there is hope. Uh, you'll find in your low days uh, uh, you can get out of the valley and get to the mountaintop uh, uh, because our God said, Fear not. Uh, he said, Fear not. Not, for I have redeemed thee I have called thee by thy name thou art mine I notice uh, uh, he is making this very personal uh, he said I the Lord uh, have redeemed thee uh, I the Lord uh, have named thee uh, I the Lord I the Lord uh, 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 have done this he said thou art uh, mine. Uh, do you realize uh, you were born in sin? Uh, 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 my dear friends, not only was you born in sin, uh, you liked sin. Uh, you was a product of sin. Uh, uh, you were a sinner by nature, uh, a sinner by practice, uh, and a sinner by choice. Uh, you were on the oxen block to sin. Uh, you were bound by sin. You were chained to sin. Uh, and sin was dragging you off into devil's hell. Uh, but hey, uh, when you was on the oxen block, and nobody cared for your soul Jesus came and Jesus redeemed you from your sin I'm glad he saved me redeemed me he bought me back from sin hey can I say then he gave me his name I'm a Christian hey he said thou art mine can I say I'm engraved in the palm of his hand I'm in his hand his hand's in the father's hand no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Uh, hey, I am His, uh, and He is mine. Uh, what a relationship we have with God. Uh, you say, why are you so excited, and why are some so excited? Uh, because the very God that made me not only saved me, uh, but He's my dearest friend. Uh, I have a relationship with Him. Uh, I talk with Him. I walk with Him. Uh, and one of these days, I'm going to abide with Him forevermore. Say, so you talk to God every day. Does He talk back to you? He sure does. Said, you're crazy. No, He talks to me through His Word. He talks to me through the Spirit of God in my heart. Uh, I've never heard his audible voice, but I've heard his voice. I've never seen him with the natural eye, but I've seen him by faith. I have a relationship with him. I love that old hymn uh, in the garden. He walks with me and talks with me uh, and tells me I'm one of his own. Uh, I'm glad for him. Uh, I can identify with the little Shunammite maid who said uh, uh, he's the fairest of 10,000 of my soul. Uh, uh, he's altogether lovely. Uh, uh, you cannot beat the Lord. Uh, the bottom line is here today, I'm not serving a dead Jew. Uh, I'm not only excited about the risen Savior. I know him, and he knows me. I have a relationship. And the question is, do you know him today? Do you have a personal relationship with God? I didn't ask you if you knew about Him. Do you know Him? Can you go back to a place where you met Him? Uh, oh, I, I can't stop there. Listen, Brother Phil, I've told this story a lot, but I'm going to tell it again. Uh, in March of 1989, that little lovely brunette married me. She didn't have to marry me. Her daddy tried to talk her out of it all the way down the aisle. Uh, she'd probably been better off if she didn't marry me, but she married me. I've never forgot that. I've never forgot what she looked like. I've never forgot the ceremony. I've never forgot the songs that were sung. I've never forgot standing there for two hours in the receiving line as everybody come by and telling us uh, 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 congratulations, and I had them rented tuck shoes on. My feet still hurt. I've never forgot that. Huh? I have uh, 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 three foster kids. Uh, I, I remember the night he was born. Uh, 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 on September 21st, uh, 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 1992, can I say this about him? Uh, 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 he's, uh, he was wonderful. We was excited. We couldn't have... Miss Annette was in labor 24 hours. We thought he was never coming. Mm -mm. 
He was born about 1136 that night. Hmm? The doctor wouldn't leave. He was waiting for him to come. He kept telling Miss Nat, if you don't come soon, we're going to have to have a C-section. She says, no, just wait a little longer. The nurse was supposed to get off. Uh, we had a great nurse. Uh, she was supposed to get off. She says, no, I've stuck it out this long. I'm staying till that booger gets out. Huh? As soon as he's born, she's saying happy birthday to him. Uh, I've never forgot that. Listen, you got to understand, I'm not a blood and guts guy. I'm a guy like back in Andy Griffith days where the father's supposed to sit out in the waiting room. They come out and say he's here. Huh? Uh, it's a boy. Huh? No, no, no. She said, if I'm going through it, you're going through it. Huh? Hey, she made me go to them classes, you know, them childbirth classes. Uh, and they told us, uh, at the end, you'll get to watch a movie. I was real excited about seeing that. No, they knew I needed help. Every one of the classes we watched a movie. Uh, there's no way anybody's in as much pain as them women in them movies. I mean, there was something bad about that. I'm thinking, there ain't no way I can get through this. Uh, we got to the hospital. I told the doctor, if she gets an epidural, I get one. Huh? He said, we can arrange that. I remember that, huh? Can I say, I remember when Christian was born. Christian was a little bit better. He was only in labor. She was only in labor him about, about four hours. We went down. It's not even there. A pizza joint down there in uh, 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 Erlanger. Uh, 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 we went down there and ate some spicy food and went home. She said, I'm in labor. Huh? Uh, uh, ladies, that's the key. Eat spicy food. They come out quicker. Huh? And then we went to the hospital. Christian was born. That was a blessing. I mean, when Sidney Kate was born, uh, 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 we knew she was going to be driven. Uh, uh, listen, she, uh, uh, it was on a Sunday morning. We rushed to the hospital. Uh, 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 I go to leave for so they can get Miss Annette the epidural. I'm headed to the cafeteria to get some chocolate. Uh, and can I say, I didn't get halfway there. They paged me back to the room. She wasn't waiting. She came. Miss Annette didn't even get the epidural. Uh, uh, the doctor didn't even get there. The house doctor delivered her. He was so excited. First time he ever delivered a baby. I remember the day she was born. Uh, I remember the day I got married. Uh, I remember the last basket I made in high school basketball. I remember getting the big hits. I remember the big games. I remember all those things. Uh, say, what are you saying, preacher? Uh, if I remember those things, uh, how can I not remember the day of all days? Uh, the day when I met Jesus. Uh, hey, the third Saturday night of March, 1974. Uh, hey, at the after in Baptist Church. Uh, I didn't realize how lost I was. Uh, babe, but my granddaddy was preaching that night, but somebody a whole lot bigger was preaching to me. Uh, and that night at an old-fashioned altar, uh, I bowed down and accepted the Lord. Uh, he changed my life. Uh, I've never been the same. Uh, I've had a relationship with him ever since. Uh, oh, I've failed him, uh, but he's never failed me. Uh, oh, what a Savior. Uh, do you know him? today we see a personal relationship can I say something about him he didn't rent us there's some believe you can lose it he didn't rent us can I say this he didn't return us huh? a lot of you spent all weekend shopping by the way how come restaurants got to be closed but Walmart was packed on Black Friday just asking huh a lot of you spent all weekend shopping for people that the day after Christmas they're going to return it. And I say, Lord, never return me. He never rented me. He redeemed me. God bless His holy name. Can I say there's a personal relationship? Notice the purpose for redemption. I don't know about you, but I've asked the Lord a lot of times, why did you save me? Why did you die for me? Why did you put up with me? I don't know if you ever asked. I've asked Him that. Why did he save us? Well, we find it in verse number 7. He said, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have, here it is, created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. You know why God saved you? It's not about you. He did it for his glory. Nobody else could have redeemed you. You couldn't redeem yourself. You couldn't earn your way to heaven. If you was blessed to make a million dollars a minute and you gave it all to charity, that wouldn't merit you one golden brick in the streets of glory. Hmm? Uh, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags, the Bible said. You couldn't redeem you. Can I help you something? Church couldn't redeem you. There's no church, no denomination. There's no preacher. There's no uh, 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 person in authority. There's nobody that could have redeemed you from your sin. 
The only one that could save you is Jesus. Brother Phil was praying. He quoted the verse. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He saved you so he'd get the glory for it. Hmm? Why do you think we got that sign up there? Worthy is the Lamb. Why do you think we got that sign up there? To God be the glory. Coming and going. You know why you're here. It's all about Him. We see the purpose for His redemption. We see the personal relationship. But I also want you to notice the providential seal. Look at verse 11. He said, I, even I, am the Lord. That's pretty emphatic. I don't need a new version to explain that to me. Huh? He said, and beside me, there is no Savior. And the only one that can save you is Him. Amen. And He's the Lord. He's Alpha Omega. Huh? He's the beginning and the end. He's wonderful, counselor, yeah. the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. Uh, he's the very subject of every song we sing. Uh, he's found on every page in the Scriptures. Uh, he alone is the Lord. Uh, and you have a providential seal on you if you're saved. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise because the Lord did it. Hmm? Well, that's all wonderful. Um, I'm interested in this thought this morning. Journey in with Jesus. I've been walking with him since 1974. Now there's peaks and there's valleys. There's bends and there's straight stretches. I say there's been good times and bad times. But there's something about walking with Jesus that it really don't matter what you face. Now I know that while journeying with Him, most of the time it provides much elation. That's why that guy keeps jumping up and down. He's elated today. Because he knows where Jesus brought him from. Well, brings excitement. If Jesus doesn't excite you, you neither either get right with God or get born again because you got the wrong Jesus. Huh? Listen, I, I look around and see what mess this old world's in, but then I get thinking, but I get to go to church on Sunday. Huh? It brings elation, it brings excitement, it brings enlightenment. You know, all these years I've been saved, Jesus still showing me things and still just dumbfounded me. Hmm? Can I say this? Brings encouragement. Hmm? I, hey, listen. It don't matter which one gets in the White House. I know who's going to get in there if they do it right. That doesn't encourage me like knowing Jesus is on the throne. Because whoever gets in the White House, he's, he's limited. But Jesus is unlimited. He's omnipotent. That means he has all power. Hmm? Can I say this? Being saved brings enjoyment. It's a joy being saved. The trip's been a blessing. Uh, it's a joy knowing my sins are washed away. It's a joy knowing I have heaven as my home. It's a joy knowing that I've got good friends in this life that I'm going to spend eternity with. It's just a joy. Everything about it's a joy. But can I say this? In this chapter... Isaiah reveals some other things on this journey. So let me give you three things. We'll go to the house, all right? Journeying with Jesus. Yeah, it's wonderful. But there's some other things you'll face. I'm going to say, first of all, there's perils. Not every day is a good day. Not every day is high cotton. Not every day is exciting doing backflips, acting like Daffy Duck when he thinks he beat Bugs Bunny out on something which he didn't because Bugs Bunny never lost. That's why I've always been a Bugs Bunny fan. What's up, Doc? Huh? What can I say? Some days are bad days. Huh? Miss Nett had to tell me I had cancer in 2019. That wasn't a good day. Huh? What can I say? Brother Phil didn't fall apart because I knew it didn't catch Jesus by surprise. Can I say, Brother Clint, is a blessing because I didn't have to come over to the hospital and you have to do something with me. 
get me ready for surgery or something. Uh, I'm just telling you God's good. Uh, can I say they're not all good days? Look in verse number 2. I mean, verse 1 is wonderful. He's redeemed me. I'm his. But look at verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shalt the flame kindle upon thee. He didn't say being saved, you'd never face any waters or any rivers or any fire. He just said he'd be with us. Now notice some things about these perils. He said there'll be perils of waters. That's a picture of sadness. Hmm? There are some days, they're not glad days, they're sad days. There's a lot of things that bring sadness to our hearts. Uh, discouragement can bring sadness to your heart. When you're counting on something and it doesn't come through. Uh, dejection. When people deject you and you're, you're all alone. You feel like nobody cares. You get sad. You can get depressed. Make you sad. Hmm? Seen them commercials about depression? Where a lady walks around with the little stick man with a smile on the stick man, but behind the mask, she's depressed. She's sad. Hmm? A lot of people do that. Can I say there are people who come to church with a smile on their heart, but they're sad in their heart. Smile on their face, but they're sad in their heart. There's perils of waters, sadness. There's perils of rivers, sorrow. Floods of sorrow can come into your life. You can get broken hearted. Hmm? I mean broken hearted. Somebody you confide in and break your heart. Hmm? You can get burdened. I promise you one thing. You ever have children, you get burdens. You, you worry about them. Hmm? You can get beaten down. You ever been beaten down? It just seems like one thing after another just keeps flooding you, beating you down. It's sorrowful. Hmm? You can become bereaved. You lose a loved one. You lose a mother, a father, a spouse, a child. Much sorrow. That's why they call it grief. Comes along with that. And can I say this? You can even get bitter. Someone that has a bitterness of soul has sorrow of soul. There's no joy, no happiness. You face perils. You face waters, sadness. You'll face rivers, sorrow. And then he talks about fire. Picture suffering. No one signs up for that. Yet the Bible says, Yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Amen. You'll face suffering. It means you'll be afflicted. Mm, all kinds of things you can be afflicted with. Mm, you can become anxious. You ever get so anxious you think your heart's beating out of your chest? Not knowing what the test results will be. Not knowing if your child coming out of the emergency room is going to be okay. You get anxious. Hmm. And then you can also face agony, suffering, deep agony of soul. You know, sometimes when you're Confronted with somebody who's agonizing, all you can do is be there for them, hold their hand. So Isaiah lets us know, even though we're redeemed, you'll face perils. And the journey with Jesus is wonderful, but never lose sight. He never promised you a rose garden. You will face hardship. Miss Annette watched a movie last night. We got done studying, come up, and we saw the end of it. And a mama had got out of church because her daughter was sick. And she was blaming God for her daughter getting sick. 
And this is what she said. She said the same thing I've heard a, a, a hundred times. If God is so loving, why? Why did my daughter get sick? Why did my loved one pass away? Why did my little doggy get hit by a car? I mean, you know, they will come up with all kinds of things. Well, friend, let me answer your question. God is loving. The Bible says, for God is love. Hmm? Then why? Because Adam and Eve chose to sin. You realize everything was perfect until they made that choice. Then sin came into the world and sin started running its course. And death by sin. Everything that bad that happens, happens because sin came into this world. Say, so, well, if God's so loving, why did he, didn't he step in and stop it? Because if he stopped it for you, he'd have to stop it for everybody. And one day he will. He's going to judge sin one of these days and sinners. He's going to put an end to all the wrong. He's going to right every wrong and everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be restored to back the way it should have been all along. But see, right now, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people because God lets it rain on the just and the unjust alike. But in the midst of your joy, you may face some peril. But can I say this secondly? On the journey in with Jesus, there are perils. But there's also the passing through. Look what it says in verse number 2. When thou passeth through, circle that, the waters, I will be with thee. And through, circle that, the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through, circle that, the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You know what the Bible says about things that we may face? In 1 Corinthians 10.13 it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with, will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. The psalmist said in Psalm 23.4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Can I help you with something? Israel, when she was headed to the wilderness, passed through the Red Sea, the waters. Can I say that Israel, when she crossed over into Canaan land, passed through the river Jordan. She passed through the waters. She passed through Jordan. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego passed through the fiery furnace. Can I say when he said there, ye are my witnesses because I've chosen you. They knew they'd pass through the waters. They knew they'd pass through the rivers. Uh, 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 they knew that they'd pass through fire. What I'm trying to say is this, uh, my dear friends. Uh, uh, God didn't just bring you to it. Uh, God will bring you through it. Uh, hey, uh, what a blessing to know He is with us. Uh, hey, it will not overcome us. Uh, it will not overwhelm us. Uh, it will not destroy us. Uh, why? Because He is with us, my dear friends. Friends, uh, I'm glad there's the passing through. You can get through it because God will help you. Mm. He didn't just allow it to happen to you and leave you there. You'll get through it. Mm. And then I want you to see lastly, the promise. Journeying with Jesus, you'll face some perils, but you'll pass through it. Mm. Miss Mary, you, w you went through cancer. Hmm? Remember when you lost your hair and you had to wear the wig? Now you got your pretty hair back. You got through it. Well, it's, it's prettier than that wig you had. Okay, wear the wig, Mary. I don't care. Lord have mercy. You don't have cancer. But Jack, you remember when they talked about taking part of your stomach and rebuilding you an esophagus because of cancer? Didn't have to go to, through that because he brought you through it. Huh? You go through them checkups, cancer-free, cancer-free, cancer-free. Brought you through it, huh? Brought you through it! That's what he does. You remember when your heart was so broken you thought you'd never see the sun shine again? But here you are. He brought you through it. Hmm? 
Oh, it's still a memory. May even still be a scar, but he brought you through. You know what a scar shows? That it's been healed. Hmm? He brought you through it. Uh, we see the passing through, but then we see the promise. Look again in verse number 2. Look what he said. When thou passest through the waters, here it is, I will be with thee. That's a promise. And he told them they'd go through the river. The river shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. He's given them promises, but the main promise, he said, I will be with thee. Can I say, when Jesus is there with you, you can get through anything. We don't talk about this much, but between having Jordan and having Christian, we lost a baby. We was past the first trimester. We thought everything would be wonderful. We was already planning where we were going to put him. And then very unexpectedly, we lost the baby. Now, I did not have words. I didn't have anything that was going to help Miss Annette. All I could do was hold her. Because her body was already preparing to have a child. And when you lost the child, you, you go through a series of emotions that only a woman that's been through that can understand that. But can I say this? The Lord brought us through it. And you don't know how many people that lady's been able to help who's had to face that same thing. Hmm? He said, I will be with thee. And can I say, that's not the only time he's said that. If you've got a promise from God, you can get through anything. Why do you think he gave us over 30,000 promises in the scriptures? Because he knew we'd face a lot of things. Listen to some of the things God has said. In Deuteronomy 31, 6, he said, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, there's that word again, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Can I say, uh, since 1974, I can say he has never failed me, nor has he ever forsaken me. In Hebrews 13, 5, he says this, For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. He has never left me. Uh, he's always been with me. He's a part of me. I am his... Uh, he is mine. Uh, when the Holy Spirit indwelled me when I got saved, I didn't realize all that God was doing, uh, but He is in me. Uh, and every now and then, He just reminds me of my soul. I'm here. Uh, it'll be all right. Uh, hey, the Bible says in Isaiah 41.10, uh, Fear thou not, uh, for I am with thee. Uh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Uh, I will strengthen thee. Uh, yea, I will help thee. Uh, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Uh, hey, he said this, uh, If God be for us, uh, who can be against us? Uh, friend, uh, it don't matter what you face. Uh, hey, he's there. Uh, he'll strengthen you. He'll uphold you. Hey, just jump in the middle of his hand. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 28 verse 20 after Jesus has commissioned them uh, and he's about ready to go to heaven uh, he gave them this promise uh, he said and lo I am with you always uh, even until the end of the earth amen uh, and then he said in John 16 33 as he's about ready to leave uh, he said these things I have spoken unto you uh, that in me you might have peace uh, in the world you shall have tribulation uh, but be of good cheer uh, I have overcome the world uh, hey he's given you promises that he'll be with you in good times and bad times uh, the song of Solomon said he's the lily of the valley oh the valley's a low place but you get to looking around you'll find him and it'll be alright friend uh, I've found as long as he's there, everything will be all right. Mm. Uh, you remember when they was on that ship and the, uh, the water was coming inside the boat and it was about to sink uh, and the Lord was asleep on it, but one of the few times you see the Lord resting and he's on a, on, on a pillow asleep in the, in the lower part of the ship. He went and said, Master, 
Don't you care? Cares now thou not that we perish? He got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves. And became still. And he said, Why are you of oh so little faith? Can I say when Jesus is on board your ship, it won't sink. Amen. You study that out, that boat was full of water and she wasn't going down. Are you listening? When he's on board your ship, it ain't going to sink. Amen. Uh, I'm trying to help you. There's a promise yes. that God's for you. Amen. God's with you. And God's able. He's exceedingly able, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen. Amen. You just need to take refuge in the fact you're redeemed. And regardless of what you face, the Redeemer's with you. He didn't just save you. He saved you, and then He indwelled you to carry you to the other side. One of these days, He's going to give you a body like His. All right. It is all right. Yeah. Now listen to what A.W. Tozer said. I just gave you about five or six promises from God. This is what A.W. Tozer said. He said, A promise is given to me so that I may know intelligently what God has planned for me, what God will give me, and so what to claim. Those are the promises, and they are intelligent directions. They rest upon the character and the ability of the one who made them. Do you realize it's impossible for God to lie? And if God promised it, you can bank on it. And if he promised it, why are you worrying about it? Why are you fretting about it? He said, I'll be with thee. He promised you're going through it. You're not going to just, you know, succumb to it. Hmm? He's made you promises. So why are you all down in the dumps? Because you're not resting on the promises of God. Hmm? Tozer said, mm, they give me intelligent directions. His promises. That tells me there's a lot of dumb Christians. Just follow the way that he, he, he unfolds for you. Huh? The Bible says he knoweth the way that I take. And when I come forth, I shall, I shall be like gold. Huh? What's, what's he saying? He said, it'll be all right. The Lord's with you. So, hey. I don't know how this COVID thing is going to play out. It's just a virus. It's going to run its course. But I do know this. It'll be all right. Amen. So what if you die of COVID? Well, I already had it. I'm immune to it. At least for six months. I said, they don't know. But listen. Don't threaten me with heaven. If I die, I go to glory. Yeah. Be absent of the bodies who be present with the Lord. Yeah. It'll be all right. Amen. Huh? I don't know how the election's going to play out. It don't matter. The Lord's on the throne. Amen. I don't know how the economy's going to play out. Listen, I remember in the 70s when you had to buy gas based on the last number of your license plate, odd or even, or, and stuff like that. I remember that. I remember when every factory was laying off and grown men would wait in line for an hour just to get an application to you know, apply at Wendy's. I remember. See, back then they didn't have government bailouts. And then people had to find a way to put food on their table. I remember those days. Huh? I remember hard times. Uh, here's the problem. You're, you're under the age of 40. You've never seen hard times. You don't know hard times. I've seen hard times. I've seen when people didn't know where the next meal was coming from. Back before they had plastic in their pocket where they could just put it on there. And, uh, and I remember seeing people pray that God would send in food and watch God supply. I've seen hard times. Now, I didn't see the Great Depression, but I've seen some recessions, and I've seen some hard times. Hmm? But can I help you something? It didn't affect heaven. David said that he'd never seen the righteous forsaken, never seen begging bread. God is good. I'm just trying to help you this morning. He's a personal Savior. You can count on Him. He saved you to walk with you and to bring glory to His name. You may face some perils, but you're just going to pass through them and you got a promise on it. I wonder, 
Do you know him today? Right now, can you go back into my, in your mind to a place where you called on the Lord and asked him to save you? Do you, do you know him? If not, today would be a good day for you to get saved. If you're here today and you're saved, are you living in the promises of God? Or are you sitting there wringing your hands, worried about everything? I know Christian people so freaked out over this virus that they're afraid to do anything. Well, I don't know about everybody, but I know about me and Michael Jackson. We choose to live by faith and not by fear. I believe God's big enough to take care of us. He has to take care of me. Miss hmm? Renee had the COVID. She's back there. She's playing the piano today. She's doing good. Yep. Miss Jackie had the COVID. I don't know if she's doing good, but she's here, huh? <laughs> she wasn't doing good before COVID. You know what I'm saying? Don't throw it off on her. Look who she's married to, huh? She's got to deal with garbage all the time. Huh? That's all I'm missing. I'm just telling you. There are people so freaked out you know what to solve that the Lord Amen. get your promise Good hmm? Amen. so you got on an airplane you got COVID well Lord willing if I'm around in January and getting on an airplane again I'm not afraid of it Amen. and I still think she lied to me I don't think I had it <laughs> I think she's getting back at me for 31 years of driving her crazy huh Hmm? some of you Christians your life is this you're up you're down you're in and out you're fretting and worried about everything do you know worry is a sin anything that is not of faith is sin and you just freaked out about everything and some of you all you do is sit there and watch CNN I want to help you some. Even if you watch Fox News, they're CNN Junior now. You know where you'll find truth? Here. It'll help you. You see, you spend so much time listening to things that bring vexation when you need to get in the book and listen to things that'll bring joy, bring hope, bring peace, bring strength, bring faith, bring encouragement. It'll all be found here. Because when you read this book, you'll find things like, I am with thee. And he's promised that he'll be with you too. Do you know him? And if so, are you resting on his promises? If not, aren't you tired? You, you've got to be wore out. This will wear you out. Huh? He said, my peace I leave with thee. Not peace of the world. My peace. You can find a peace that passes understanding in him. How's, how's your life working out? Do you know him? If so, are you resting on his promises? If not, I'd get in the altar and say, God, forgive me for not resting on your promises. If you don't know him, I'd get in this altar and let somebody take a Bible and introduce you to him. It's the greatest night of my life. It'll be the greatest day of your life. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Today's the day of salvation. And today's a perfect time because the crowd's way down. You don't have that excuse. Well, well, well all these people, well, half of them aren't here. Today would be a good day for you to come and give your heart to Jesus. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll take a Bible, show you how to be saved. Say, preacher, I, I sure hope I'm saved. Well, you can know you're saved. Hmm. The Bible says these things have I written that you may know. You can know that you're saved. I know that I'm saved. I remember the day you saved me. Changed my life. He'll change your life too. Friend, you can be saved today. I wouldn't leave here without being saved. You can look at this world and see the chaos. And can I say, it's just the beginning of sorrows. It's going to get worse. Because when the Lord takes the church out of here, there'll be no constraints. It'll be total anarchy. What's going on in Portland is going to be going on throughout the world. My dear friends, why would you want to be in the center of that mess when you can be saved and have heaven as your home and not have to worry about anything? You can have that today. If you give your heart and life to Jesus. Let's all stand. Miss Renee, you come. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation.
while they're picking out a song let's pray Father we sure do bless you thank you for your promises Lord thank you that it's impossible for you to lie God if you said it that just settles it God too many of your people live in fear Lord they fret and worry about things that are out of their control Lord if they'd ever just realize that you are in control Lord that would solve a lot of their hysteria and God, I pray if there's anyone like that here today, they'd come and just give it to Jesus. Lord, I'm concerned there may be some here today that don't know you. They can't go back to a place where they met the Lord. I pray today would be the day that you redeem them from sin. Today would be the day when that measure of faith that you've given to every man would flourish in their heart. Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit through cords of love would draw them to you. Now, Father, have your will and way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. And God, increase the faith of your people. And God, save that one nearest tell. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.